Sci-fi surprise time! I did that backwards again. Hey everyone, it's Shannon, and it's back time for Sci-Fi Surprise. I'm here in my new digs, as you can tell by the lighting, is extremely different. Um, I'm going to work on that, but uh, this is the best I can do for now. And I know it's a little, like, you know, from the depths of going to, like, really bright, high contrast, but I did not want to let that stop me from getting back to making videos. So here I am, and I am going to share all about... The Alpha Incident. Oh, it's following. It's following. It's following. Of course, I have to find a new way to do stuff. There we go. That's supposed to be a little railroad, in case you're wondering what that is, because part of this takes place in... I don't know. I don't know what's that called? It's like a little, a little office by, like, a railway... It's not even a station, but it's like a connecting thing. Anyway, Alpha Incident, number 32 in the Sci-Fi Surprise series. This film's from 1977. I was really hoping this was going to be like a really cool 70s sci-fi, science-y, crazy movie. Um, and it started off promising. Scientists, you know, jackets, not knowing what's going on, working on things, you know, trying to solve things, all very evasive, and you don't know what's going on, and stuff like that. So it was definitely off to a promising start, um, but it actually, this one's a bit more, although, yes, is it science fiction? Yes. Check Bert check mark. It is a science fiction movie, so that's a good thing. Um, but it's a bit more of a character drama in the fact that it's a boiling room, boiling pot. Is that what it's called? Is, that, is it boiling pot? Boiling something? Boiling point? Boiling? I don't know. Um, uh, it's, I think I hear it used more in, in uh, books, but, um, but the sort of like, get a group of people together, you know, they have to stay together, they don't want to be there, what's going to happen? It's sort of more of that kind of feel. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then the science is a little more separate. It's a little more just the idea to get them into this crazy situation or, you know, hard to endure situation. So, it's weird because in some ways there were most of the characters in it I, I enjoyed. Uh, they had interesting perspectives. The acting was reasonable. Some of the some of the people were better than others, um, and some of it was a little. Some of the more caricature-y actors were a little more over the top. But it, you know it worked. And actually, in that sense, it kind of reminded me of one of the early ones in the series, Moon of the Wolf, where it had that same kind of feel. Like some of them were much more caricature-y, but then there was some really good acting, and it's a bit of an odd pairing. But, you know, uh, I'll take, you know, I'll take that over, like, it wasn't bad. Now, I didn't, like, did I enjoy this one? You know, not as much as I had hoped. I thought this would be a little more science-y based. I like character stuff, but just I was really hoping it was more science-y, you know, and more crazy and had more levels of interest. It's more like, problem, go there, will they be able to take it? you know, scientists off somewhere else doing science things. And actually, that was one of the things that was really funny is when the movie started and it's all science-y and, like, people with masks and great awesome 70s big beards and stuff like that. I had no, I couldn't tell at all if it was dubbed or not because all of it was, like, so, like, distanced or people from the, you know, talking but you're seeing the back of their head or they're really far away and it's dark. And the film quality is only okay. Like, some of the edges are a bit blurry and, you know, but it's not bad. It's definitely a watch but it was so funny, like, until they actually had other people talking, I had no idea whether or not it was a foreign movie or not. But it is pretty Americana, like, you know, it's on a railway, and they have a guy that's from the south, and so with the southern accent and stuff like that. So it was pretty clear, you know, uh, at a certain point that it was American. <laughs> but um, I, the one thing the one thing that really kind of bothered me, though, is there's a female character in, uh, in it, and I just, I just don't really... I just didn't really super believe um, some of the things that she did, and it is a woman screenwriter, so I can't say that it's someone that doesn't understand women, so, but it was just, you know, I don't know, there's a weird sort of, there's an edge to, especially in gender dynamics, with, uh, in 70s films, that I often I don't like, so I think it's just sort of that kind of tone and that kind of issue and there's sort of the whole like big, you know, they're dealing with a big sort of outbreak quarantine, you know, thing. So it's pretty heavy, so I get it when people get a little loopy, but I just I don't know. I still wasn't just wasn't quite by, by quite buying it. But 
you know, overall science fiction, yes. Uh, I didn't fall asleep. That's a big tick box. <laughs> So funny, I think I've probably fallen asleep in so many of the movies, and again, that's more to do with me than the film, so I don't, I don't actually, you know, most of the times I wouldn't bug the film for it. This one was definitely engaging and interesting throughout, and I, you know, I enjoyed it from, from that perspective, but I didn't, like, love it, so maybe I will love the next one. Let's, let's find out, let's find out what the next one is. And when I moved, I did find a random one of these <laughs> little pieces of paper just amongst things. So I have a feeling I probably have a little less than 18 in here, but we'll see how things go. I'm still planning on hoping to um, complete the series by the end of the year, and uh, it's, it's, it's possible. 18 movies in two months and a couple days, it's that's a little challenging, but it's possible. Oh, that's more than like two a week. Anyway, not going to think about the math, I'm just going to keep going forward. Me not thinking about math, that's so weird. I'm always the math person. Oh, it's this one. It's that one. This is it. This will be the next movie. Crash of the Moons. Crash of the Moons. Awesome. That sounds 70s for sure. For sure. 1954, black and white. That is our next movie in the sci-fi surprise series. And I double-checked, and it doesn't look like the Alpha Incident is public domain. So sadly, uh, you'd have to buy this collection or some, uh, or find another way to watch it. If you watch it, I don't know if you'd want to watch it by my recommendation or not. I don't know. But it was kind of cool to see one of this sort of time period, because w w I bought this collection last October when I did my 31 Days of Horror last year, and I realized that I like science fiction you know, more like more than horror, if not the same more, probably more than horror, so why don't I do a science fiction series? And that was sort of the inspiration to start talking uh, science fiction. It's hilarious, though, because a lot of the, most of these movies are unknown or not very well known or certainly not very well received and stuff like that, so it's kind of funny. I didn't pick actually big science fiction movies to talk about with my love of science fiction, but rather little, little, you know, hidden, hidden gems. <laughs> Some of them are hidden gems. Anyway, I'm in, I'm still enjoying it, regardless of how good the movies are or if they're not good. There's been some. There actually has been some really big. Uh, there has been some really some films I really enjoyed in this one, and hopefully there will still be more. And who knows? Maybe Crash of the Moons will be the case. Um, I also just wanted to say I'm loving everyone who's doing their their 31 Days of Horror or ha Halloween explorations or series explorations. I'm really enjoying it. I had really wanted to do that this year, but with the move, it just wasn't going to happen. I do have a couple of movies that I'm hoping to get to, but it's just been, you know, you know what it's like when you move. It's just everything's crazy. I was very, I was impressed I could find my hat. Like, you know, like, it's just like, you know, I was actually, this is not even on the right size index card. I couldn't find my index cards until earlier today, and then I and then I did find my index cards. I feel better. It's not knowing where my index cards were was kind of driving me bananas. So, but things move forward and move on and are good. So that's it for this video. Yes, I hope it uploads because my last one didn't. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks for watching.